you've probably used it a hundred times, maybe without even realizing it. That smooth white powder that thickens your sauces, crisps up your fried chicken, and somehow finds its way into your pudding mix. Yeah, we're talking about cornstarch. And fun fact, it's in over half of all packaged foods around the world. But here's the thing most people never think about. How does that hard golden corn kernel turn into this super fine powder in your pantry? Well, today we're going deep, not just farm deep. We're talking centrifuge level deep into one of the most underrated ingredients in your kitchen. From 1800s factory experiments to billion dollar industries, this is the surprisingly fascinating journey of how cornstarch is made. Origin. Cornstarch didn't just appear out of nowhere. It started with a discovery in 1842 by Thomas Kingsford, a chemist at a wheat starch factory in New Jersey. While experimenting with corn, he figured out how to extract its hidden starch content, creating a powder that was cheaper and more efficient than wheat starch. At the time, corn was mostly used for livestock feed and alcohol, but Kingsford's breakthrough transformed it into a versatile ingredient that quickly spread through American households and industries. By the late 1800s, cornstarch was everywhere, thickening sauces, improving baked goods, and serving unexpected roles far beyond the kitchen. But most people have no idea how it's made. Let's change that. Step 1. Corn Selection Every scoop of cornstarch begins in the fields, with a special kind of corn called dent corn, also known as field corn. Unlike the sweet corn you eat off the cob, dent corn is tougher, drier, and packed with starch, making it ideal for industrial processing. In the U.S. alone, farmers grow over 14 billion bushels of dent corn each year, making it one of the most produced crops on Earth. This corn is left to dry naturally on the stalk until the kernels are rock hard. The drier the corn, the easier it is to break down and extract the starch inside. Once harvested, the kernels are stored in massive silos, kept cool, dry, and pest-free to maintain quality. Before any processing begins, the corn is carefully sorted and inspected for moisture content, mold, kernel damage, density, and even color. This isn't just about looks. Impurities can impact the starch's yield, color, and purity. Only the strongest, cleanest, most starch-rich kernels move forward. Loving it so far? We're just getting to the good stuff. Hit that like button if you're learning something new and don't forget to subscribe to Products Uncovered for more awesome deep dives into everyday ingredients. Step 2. Steeping Before you can extract starch, you've got to unlock it. And the way we do that is steeping, a process that's equal parts chemistry and patience. The clean, dried corn kernels are soaked in warm water, usually around 125 to 130 degrees Fahrenheit for up to 48 hours. But it's not just water. Sulfur dioxide is added to the mix to prevent microbial growth and loosen up the protein matrix that holds starch inside. Over time, the water seeps deep into the kernel, softening it and increasing its moisture content to about 45%. The germ, fiber, starch, and protein begin to separate on a molecular level. But why soak so long? Because corn is stubborn. Without this extended bath, Separating the valuable components would take way more energy and yield far less starch. It's like marinating meat. The longer it sits, the better the results. When steeping is done, the corn has tripled in size. The once hard kernel is now soft enough to be ground and separated step by step into its core ingredients. Germ, fiber, protein called gluten, and of course, starch. Step 3. Grinding. The corn moves into grinders, massive steel rollers that crack the soft kernels wide open. This is where the physical separation starts. The first goal is to free the germ, the nutrient-rich part of the kernel that contains corn oil. Specialized germ separators use differences in density to separate them. Next, the remaining corn slurry heads to a second round of grinding, this one finer and more intense. Here, machines break the corn down further, freeing the starch and protein from the fibrous outer hull. The slurry, now a milky mix of starch, gluten, and tiny bits of fiber, is pumped into screens and centrifuges. These work like high-speed salad spinners, separating heavier starch granules from lighter protein and fiber particles. 
The fiber gets filtered out and often reused for livestock feed, leaving a cloudy liquid packed with starch and protein. The next step? Getting pure starch out of that mix, and that requires even more precision. What's amazing here is how mechanical and natural forces work together. Gravity, density, and motion to isolate one key ingredient out of many. But here's a fun question before we move on. Before it became a food superstar, cornstarch had a pretty unexpected first job back in the 1840s. Was it used to A. Soften fabrics B. Treat wounds C. Create fireworks D. Clean mirrors One of these is the real deal and the answer might just blow your mind. Stick around till the end for the reveal. Step 4. Starch Separation Here's where cornstarch earns its purity. The thick slurry of starch and gluten enters hydrocyclones, cone-shaped machines that use centrifugal force to isolate the heavier starch particles. These machines aren't just for food, they're also used in mining, oil refining, and wastewater treatment, showing just how powerful and versatile this tech really is. Imagine a tornado in a tube, spinning so fast that the denser starch is flung to the outer edge, while the lighter gluten stays closer to the center. Multiple stages of this spinning process, sometimes dozens in a row, are used to ensure nearly 100% pure starch. This step is like panning for gold, but instead of sifting through gravel, you're working with microscopic particles. Every pass through the centrifuge makes the starch purer, whiter, and more uniform. At the end of this purification process, what's left is a slurry of almost pure starch suspended in water a thick, smooth liquid that looks like milk, but feels like silk between your fingers. But the job isn't done yet. This starch milk still needs to be dried, and that's where things get steamy. Step 5. Drying The final transformation from starch milk to dry powder happens in flash dryers. Machines blow hot air through the slurry, evaporating moisture almost instantly. As the water vapor leaves, tiny starch granules fall like snow inside the chamber. In mere seconds, the wet starch becomes a fine, dry, fluffy powder. But the process must be controlled carefully. Temperatures need to be high enough to evaporate water fast, but not so hot that the starch granules start to cook or gelatinize. Once dried, the powder is sifted to remove any clumps and pass through a final round of quality testing. Moisture levels, granule size, color, and purity are all measured. High-end cornstarch should be bright white, flavorless, and totally odorless. It's bagged in large sacks or loaded into bulk containers, ready for shipping to food factories, pharmaceutical labs, and yes, even your local grocery store. Step 6. Packaging and Uses Finally, the cornstarch is packed for its final journey. Whether it ends up in a box labeled for home cooks or in a 50-pound sack for an industrial bakery, packaging must protect this sensitive powder from moisture and contamination. Vacuum-sealed bags, paper-lined sacks, or plastic containers with tamper-proof seals are used. Even one drop of water could ruin a whole batch by turning it into a gummy paste. From here, cornstarch enters a vast network of distribution. It might end up in a pudding cup, a dusting on shredded cheese to prevent clumping, or even inside aspirin tablets as a binding agent. It's used in biodegradable plastics, cosmetics, and paper production. And in your kitchen? It's that white powder you turn to when the gravy's too thin or the cookie dough needs more body. What began as a tough golden kernel in a field has now become one of the most adaptable ingredients in the world. That's the wild journey of cornstarch from dusty farm fields to spinning machines and steamy dryers, all to end up as that little white scoop in your kitchen. Oh, and that question? Before it was used to thicken sauces, cornstarch was actually used to stiffen shirt collars. Yes, its first gig was in laundry, not food. If you've got a weird cornstarch hack or recipe, drop it in the comments. And if you learned something new today, hit that subscribe button. We've got tons more everyday stuff to uncover. See you next time.